first time in a while, for the first time since October 7th. They take on uh, the San Diego State Aztecs here this Saturday, November 4th. 7.30 kickoff from Seth Q Stadium on ESPNU. The pregame coverage on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network, that begins at 7 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, tickets are available at 408-924-7589 or sjsuspartans.com. Now, before we bring Coach Brennan up, uh, there was an announcement for the time and the kickoff at the uh, Nevada game coming up in a, a couple of weekends on November 11th for San Jose State against Nevada. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff now in Reno, and it will be televised on ESPN3. Let's bring up San Jose State head coach, Brent Brennan. Hello. Thanks for coming. Um, tough, tough afternoon in Provo. Um, first of all, give credit to BYU, uh, their players, their coaches, Coach Sataki, and uh, the rest of his crew there. They did a great job. Um, they, you know, they beat us good, and we didn't do enough things in the game to give us a chance to win. That's plain and simple. You know, went into that game saying that we needed to win the turnover battle, and we did not do that or did not even come close. Um, we need to have game-changing special teams, and, and we were unable to do that uh, effectively throughout the game, starting with the kickoff and then um, and then win the fourth quarter, which um, you know was the one positive, I thought. Um, the kids continued to fight throughout the game, and uh, we scored more points than they did in the fourth quarter, and I think that's the first time we've done that in quite a while. So um, in moments of you know the struggle and what we're going through as a football team right now, we're we're always going to be honest and direct with what we need to get fixed and what wasn't good enough. And then um, we also got to feel good about the things that happened in that game that were really good. Um, you know, we had a, a couple young players grade out, grade out at a really high level for us. And so to see some of those, those freshmen and redshirt freshmen play well and make some of the plays they made was pretty exciting. So, but we continue to be a work in progress. And um, as frustrating as it is at times, um, I got to make sure that we continue to work and continue to move the team and the program in the direction that we want it to go. Um, on, a, on a brighter note this week, we're pretty excited about this upcoming game. We're excited about the idea of Tech Day and, and what that brings to our campus. Uh, another effort by our program, our athletic department, and our school to uh, continually kind of bring kind of the tech world in Silicon Valley and our football program together, and hopefully that manifests itself in, in new relationships, new opportunities for our players in terms of internships and, and life after football. Um, I think it's really cool that Crowd King and Avaya are you know, two of the main sponsors. We're having a sympos symposium on Friday, which our players and coaches, some of our coaches will be involved. It's discussing kind of uh, tech and athletics and how the two are kind of becoming integrated as we go forward. Uh, in sports every day. So it's going to be a really great event. Our juniors and seniors in our program will get to participate. And there should be, a, there's going to be a lot of great speakers, people involved in every level of professional athletics in the area. And also uh, a lot of the people from Silicon Valley, from great corporations and companies. And again, it's just something that we're really excited about. It's a real positive. So that's Friday. And, uh, and we're excited to get ready for the San Diego State game. Yeah, what do we got? Coach. Um, hi, Ernie. Hi. Uh, obviously, the season is, isn't going as planned in terms of the results. Uh, you mentioned in the past it's, it's a matter of playing tough teams, it's a matter of playing physical teams. Uh, this week, another one coming up against San Diego State, of course. Do you feel like this program you mentioned in your opening statement is growing in the right direction? Yeah, I absolutely feel like we do. You know, it's really hard when you put in all the work and these players have been busting their tails week in and week out in practice and then you don't get the result you want on Saturday. And so that's really a frustrating uh, thing to try and battle through. Um, to their credit, we had another great day today of practice to start the week off. So I feel really good about that. I believe we're going in the right direction. We are going to stay the course as a, as a program, to, as a team, as a coaching staff. And I think um, you know, just knowing who's coming to town, we got to be ready for a very, very physical football team. That's how they play. That's how they're built. And we got to dig in and be ready to go. It doesn't matter who's healthy, who's not. We got to step up and play. And that's, a, and that's the only choice we have. 
coach, looking at the pure numbers, one might think that San Jose State had a decent game because the running game showed signs of improvement. Tyler Nevins recorded 112 yards. But what are a couple of things that the team could learn from a disastrous first half? Well, I think the, you know, the biggest thing that we got to understand is how important the football is, right? You know, when, when we're carrying the football, when we're throwing the football, you're, you're holding the hopes and dreams of everybody in the building, everybody on campus and everybody in San Jose or that went to school here. And, um, you know, I think, you know, some of that stuff will be, you know, again, emphasized and the, you know, the, the challenge of that is us as a coaching staff working with young players who are, you know, responsible for those turnovers, right? Um, the, the guys that, that are, had those turnovers on Saturday are either freshmen or retro freshmen or new and trying to get them to understand the importance of the ball and, and uh, you know, doing the proper things in preparation to make sure we do a good job securing it and protecting it. Uh, Coach Mohamed here. Um, I was, you mentioned the redshirt freshman, the freshman turned the ball over. You were right there, though, uh, when, when Nevins turned the ball over. It seemed like you were right there in his ear. When he got hurt on one of the plays, you were right there helping him off the field. Uh, same with Montel Aaron as well. Um, what, what are some of the things that are said at that point, um, you know, them being young, but also knowing that the head coach is going to be right there with you right after you make certain plays like that? Well, I think it's important that these kids know that I'm with them and that I got their back. And, um, you know, there's – People are going to make mistakes. Players make mistakes. Coaches make mistakes. And, um, you know, I think it's important that they know that we're all in this together. Um, Tyler and Montel are two kids that take it so serious. It's so important to them. So when they, when they have a critical mistake like that, they're, they're upset. And so those times when you see – you will never see me, you know, get after a kid after something like that ever because I'm just trying to get him to breathe or stop crying or just because they're so emotionally into it. They want the best for this team. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of both those kids, the way they've been fighting. You know, we get Montel back and, you know, after losing him for a month and, he, and he's battling his tail off. So, and Tyler Nevins has been a consistent good player for ever since he kind of stepped into that starting role. So um, he was so upset on the sideline. I was just putting my arm around him saying, hey, it's okay. We're going to put you back out there and we're going to give it to you again. And you got to go make plays with it. Kind of working off of that, uh, as Ernie mentioned, I mean, obviously, season not going as, as you'd hope it'd go. Um, when you ha have a game and then you get into the next week of practice before you uh, prepare for the next team, what is the message like to, to a team? Obviously, you can look at, at things on paper and, and they only tell part of the story. You've right. been, been very optimistic on, on a lot of the players and a lot of the progress that's been made. And, and knowing that this has to be something that's going to go for a while. Uh, what, what is the message like from the coaching staff to the players in week to throw the previous week away and get ready for the next game? Well, that's what Monday's all about. You know, Monday is, you know, that's, it's honest Monday. So we got to be real about what was bad and we got to be real about what was good. And for the coaching staff, I think, um, you know, we have to have short memories too. We have to address the problem, fix it, and then we have to, get on to the next opponent. Um, we, we can't be harping on mistakes over and over again and making kids relive it. Um, so we got to help them see it, fix it, and then move on. And, and that's, and that's kind of the, that's how we start the week every week, you know, and we're showing everything from pictures or video of great effort plays to bad effort plays. You know, we're showing, today we show the kickoff at the end of the game, right? It's the last play of the game, basically. And we have three freshmen, two true freshmen and a redshirt freshman blow through their front line and tackle it inside the tent. And I'm like, here we go. That's what it should look like. You know, that's what I'm excited about is finding those moments, right? Teaching the bad ones, teaching and learning from the bad ones, but getting excited about good moments like that. Trey Walker's touchdown, you know, the things that happened late in that game, our defense bailing the offense out probably four times based on turnovers or bad field position with either field goals or stops, great stuff. So that's kind of the balance there. Coach, uh, keeping it on defense, uh, of course, your D-line. Uh, you've been kind of mixing and matching a lot of that. Uh, We're getting creative, that. baby. Yeah. Getting creative. Um, but the line only has, has one or no sacks in the last four games. Right. And I was looking through, you know, when was the last time that's happened? It's been right. at least 15 years. Right. Um, kind of 
just any comment on, on your defensive line, the way they've been playing lately? I think those kids are learning, and I think it's hard. You know, when you look out there, um, there was a time in the game yesterday where in our front seven, only Frank and Ethan were not either a converted offensive lineman or a true freshman linebacker. And so um, as those guys continue to learn, they'll get better. But it's always a challenge. You know, um, injury is part of the game, dealing with that, working through that, and finding a creative way to give your defense a chance. I thought our defense was outstanding on third down in this game, which is always one of those critical situations you're trying to uh, you know, emphasize and focus on. And so I was really proud of them that way. And I think there's a, there's a lot of good stuff. You know, the big plays and the missed tackles are the things that hurt you, and those are the things that light up the scoreboard. Some of those were compounded with the turnovers and the field position. But, um, you know, getting off the field on third down, um, some of those young guys making the amount of tackles or, you know, contributing the way they did. Ali'i was awesome. You know, true freshman, walk on, doing great. So um, those are the things that, like I said, we're trying to fix the bad, focus on the good. Coach, how did BYU's offense seemingly get back on track against this defense? I think, um, you know, a combination of our youth in the defensive front and the inability to pressure the quarterback really gave Mangum a lot of time and a lot of confidence. Um, he had been kind of struggling, I'd say, up until that point. Um, but he played his best game, for sure, against us. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's a combination of some of those, those guys in the front you know, getting used to playing and understand the speed and the size of the game. Um, some of those situations we had to play linebackers as defensive linemen and uh, BYU's offensive line is big. And so they swallowed those guys up a little bit. So those were some of the challenges we were trying to fight. Coach Odom I thought was really creative with our blitz package and trying to create some pressure at times. Um, but um, it, it, it was hard. You know, you know, it's hard when some of those guys aren't able to play for you right now. Uh, coach, you know, you talked about their quarterback, BYU's, uh, but the run game was also effective, and, and that's been an area of where you guys have, you know, yet to really uh, find find your niche uh, with the defense. But as you prepare for San Diego State, who has who's probably going to get a heavy dose of uh, Rashad Penny because right. of the weather, it's supposed to rain. Uh, what are your thoughts on, first of all, it being a night game of this upcoming week, but also knowing that because it's supposed to rain, that there will be a heavy dose of Rashad Penny? Well, I think rain or shine, you're getting a heavy dose of Rashad Penny. Then it's not going to matter. Um, you know, he's he's not the best back in the league. He's you know top two, but he's he's a brilliant player. Has been for a couple years for them. Um, you know, even with the kid they had last year, who was all world. You know, he was still returning kicks and contributing in every game. Um, I remember watching him in high school. He's Norwalk High. He's awesome in Southern California. Um, you know, that that's the thing you have to get ready for with San Diego State. You know, they're you're gonna, they're gonna line up with two tight ends, two running backs, you know, and, and pound you with the football. They're kind of old school that way. Uh, maybe a little bit more like Stanford than they are like anyone else in our conference, you know. And so that, that definitely is an adjustment. You gotta get creative with how you get enough people in the box to play the run. You gotta get your safeties involved. Um, and then everybody has to do a great job of staying in their gap and finishing tackles. Um, but um, in terms of what, what day, of the what time of the day the game's at, uh, I don't get any saying that anyway. So I'm whenever they tell us to play, I'll show up. Let's kind of keep it on the on the rushing theme here. Um, the Mountain West kind of has been like a I don't want to use the word epicenter, but it's been it's had some very good running backs, and especially the last sure. season or two. I think three of the last three of the top six uh, were leading rushers in the whole nation last last year. Uh, do you feel like you've kind of found your running back, not just for this season, but beyond in, in Tyler Nevins? Well, I think we're all really excited about Tyler. You know, uh, anytime a true freshman can come in and contribute on the level that he is, it's exciting. Our fans should be excited about it. I know our coaching staff and our team is excited about it. And uh, as you guys get to know Tyler in the media, as he gets older and keeps running the ball well, um, you'll find that he's an, he's an awesome kid. You know, he is really serious about every part of his life. Um, that's been my experience as a coach, that the guys who take school serious and handle their business in the weight room are normally your, your good players. You know, that's coaching 20 years. It's really been kind of consistent. Um, it's, I don't know that I've ever had a guy that was like a goof around guy be a baller on the field. 
you know what I mean? And so I'm excited because I think, you know, in the future we're, we're not only get good good play from Tyler, but we're going to get good leadership too. Coach, did the referee give you an explanation after the replay official determined there was no targeting penalty on the BYU t player that tackled Rishi Johnson on the kickoff return? It's funny. I've been waiting for that to come up. I'm surprised it took this long. Um, I'm not allowed to comment on the officials. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Would I love to, though? Back to uh, uh, Rashad Penny. You talked about uh, Monday being the day that you look at uh, the upcoming game as, as it relates to the tape from the previous weeks. Rashad Penny, the third player towards the top of, uh, of rushing in, uh, in the Mountain West that you've seen in the last few weeks. Yasmi St. Just, uh, Lexington Thomas from uh, uh, UNLV. Uh, every week. How, how do you relate those players? I mean, obviously, each rusher is going to be a little bit different, have their own right. uh, kind of quirks that, that make their game different than others. But how do you take the tape from, from those guys and get it ready for a guy like Penny? I, I think it's different. You know, it, every player is different. And certainly uh, San Diego State is different schematically from the previous two teams we played. They just, um, they, they've done a great job recruiting and developing to what they are. And Coach Long and his staff, you know, they've been there a while and they've really built that thing up. And you see that you've seen that thing gain momentum, you know, since, you know, since even before when 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 Coach Hoke was there and you started to see that thing get some traction. And, you know, they're playing offensively. They're playing a style of football that people don't see very often. And I think that's quite honestly why it gives people trouble. Right? It's really rare that you see somebody play with a tight end and a fullback or two tight ends and two full or in a fullback. And, and a, you know, it's just a rare that you get those personnel groups. So it's a challenge to stop it. Uh, Coach, staying on Rasheed Johnson a bit, um, you know, you talked about how one week you'll have a receiver that really shines, the next week kind of disappears. It was unfortunate that, you know, in his instance, it wasn't uh, the sense of disappearing, uh, as, as you had said previously. Uh, but uh, when you start to find the passing game as well working, but then something like that happens, um, what's what's expected? How do you expect to bounce back from a situation like that where there's no guarantees where you might get them back right away and then right. try, trying to figure out something to get the pass game going? You know, I, that comes down to somebody else stepping up. It really does. And we've had that a lot this year, right? People watching us play, they're wondering who's this guy at this position, who's that guy at that position. That's what football is, you know, is battling through the ups and downs of the season, who's healthy, who's not, who's in, who's out, who's ready, who's not ready. Um, I think, you know, Rashid, um, losing him early in that game was frustrating just because he had had a really productive game two weeks before. But I thought we saw some good stuff from some other guys in, the, in that game. I thought Trey Hartley got going a little bit in the second half. Um, I thought Billy Humphreys made some good catches down the, down the stretch. The, uh, you know, Trey Walker continues to grow and improve as a true freshman, which is exciting. So I think it's, someone else has to step up. You know what I mean? It's like they're not going to cancel the game because – you know, Rasheed Johnson gets knocked out, you know, so you got to see, you got to, you know, challenge the kids practice this week and someone else has to emerge. And, and as, as Montel continues to grow in that role, he's going to, he's going to get more comfortable with more people he's throwing to. I think last week he threw to a ton of guys, right? He spread the ball around a lot, 11 different Lawrence fan, the world's walking almanac um, gave me the statistic there, but uh, so that's good, right? Any kind, any, anytime we can distribute the ball and not be real heavy-handed with who we're giving it to or who we're throwing it to gives us a chance to be a little bit harder to defend, in my opinion. Coach, if we can uh, talk about your secondary. They're a group that is making a lot of tackles because, you know, running backs are getting loose. Uh, also, have been getting beat through the air uh, quite a bit in recent games. Uh, how much would, would you like them? They are veteran bunch. You know, how much would you like them to kind of lead rather than learn, keep learning in a way? Well, I think, um, you know, we depend on those guys for leadership all the time, you know, and I think um, we've played some good people and some good people have made some throws on them. And there's been lots of moments where those guys are right there and we just don't finish. And I think that's the challenge for them is, you know, go through all your progression, where your eyes should be, and then react, go play it and, and finish on the ball. And all those guys are more than capable of doing that. So I'm hoping this week that we get to see some of that from them. Coach, do you have an update on Rashid Johnson? I don't. Sorry.
Coach, if you could just boil down like one word uh, about the mood of this team right now heading into the San Diego State game. One word. Optimistic. Yeah, we get a chance to play again. You know, that's the, that's the good thing about it. Anytime you, you go out there and play and, you, and you're not successful, you got to be fired up for another chance to go out there and improve yourself, try and fix some of the stuff that went wrong. Coach, how is San Jose State going to prepare for a tough team like San Diego State? Well, we're going to have to do a good job of, of being physical in practice this week. Um, you know, we're going to have to bang a little bit so we make sure we get used to the, the things that I've mentioned, the, you know, the big bodies, the, the big, heavy kind of NFL-style run game, um, and then also an extremely talented running back. So you know, with our defense, there's got to be an emphasis on defeating blocks and, and tackling and finishing tackles. And um, you know, with our offense, there's got to be an emphasis on, you know, handling the physicality and the movement of their defense, which is incredibly, you know, Rocky's been running that for so long. Coach Long is a brilliant coach, and so defensively, we got to be ready for a lot of movement. Um, you know, they try and come at you a bunch of different ways. It's just not a front. Not, it's not a scheme that you see very often. So we got a lot of work to do. Talk about physicality and rushing. Tyler Nevins is season slash career high: 26 carries, 41 carries. Uh, as a team, more emphasis on the run game this week against a team that is pretty much going to bring the same thing at you. You know, f for us, that's always kind of what we're what they're giving us. You know, when we're when we're game planning, when we're uh, you know calling plays in the game, the discussions are always about what we think has the best chance for success. And so against BYU, that was kind of the case right there, playing a bunch of coverage. Um, you know, we had some some thin box counts, and we thought we could run the ball a little bit, and so that. That was kind of the way that thing went as the game continued on. Um, you know, I think the turnovers early hurt it because you couldn't get the run game going because we were giving the ball back so quick on some of those things. So you didn't have a chance to get them out of some of that big coverage looks where, 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 you, where you would like to be able to throw the ball, you know, if, if they were going to go a little bit more single high or add people to the box to try and stop the run. Thank you. All right, that does it for this week's press conference. Just to kind of add on to uh, something Coach Brennan mentioned, it's uh, powering the Silicon Valley is a summit this week on Friday, and San Jose State will be involved with that in the athletics department as well. We go on at 10 a.m. inside the Student Union Ballroom, and if you'd like to register for the event, go to eventbrite.com and search Powering the Silicon Valley. Again, eventbrite.com, searching Power the Silicon Valley, and uh, you can get your, your, uh, your RSVP in for this Friday's event. Once again, San Jose State at home inside SefQ Stadium this weekend, 7.30 kickoff tickets, 408-924-7589 or sjsuspartans.com. Thanks for watching this week, and we'll see you next time.